We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Pikeville Independent Schools Principals Forum. And as always with us today, again, Mr. Robert Jones, the principal at Pikeville Elementary School, Mr. Michael Rowe, the principal at Pikeville High School, and I'm Jerry Green, uh, the school superintendent. We just want to again say a huge welcome uh, to the community and uh, stakeholders and also uh, to the students and parents. It's been just a phenomenal uh, beginning to the school year this year. It's so hard to believe that we're in our second full week of school now and it's been an exciting start. Uh, not only the extracurriculars with the Pike County Bowl games and of course we've got volleyball and soccer going on and golf and uh, many of the other sports and the extracurriculars, whether it be the Little League, the Chorus, uh, the other extracurriculars going on at the elementary school. Uh, the first week and a half uh, uh, this past week have been just stacked with open houses at both schools. Uh, let the principal share some of uh, that news shortly. But uh, enrollment uh, is increased at Pikeville Independent Schools. If you haven't heard, you will shortly about some of the wonderful things regarding uh, test scores and the results of both students and staff's hard work in our communities. And we're just so proud and delighted to uh, have an opportunity again to share with you some of uh, these exciting things going on. Uh, Mr. Rowe, I know that you've got a, a litany of things that uh, you'd like to commend the students and staff on. First of all, we just want to say we're extremely excited and proud of our ACT rankings. Uh, when our ACT was completed last year, we were get, getting individual scores in a little over time, and we kind of knew where our average was going to be, and we were pretty close on that calculation, but we didn't know was where we were going to rank as compared to other schools. We were more than happy and excited to say we ranked fourth as a district out of 169 school districts, and we rank ninth as a high school out of 230 high schools. Uh, this is uh, something that's not happened just now. It's something that's happened over time. I want to thank Mr. Green, the board. Uh, I want to thank our elementary teachers, uh, Mr. Jones. I mean, we could not get there because you continually send students to us who are on grade level. I want to thank our teachers, and more importantly, we want to thank our students. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, our senior class, and this is based upon last year's juniors, uh, we're having a cookout for them Wednesday, August the 29th uh, during fifth period. We've got parents coming in, schools buying the food, and we're going to treat them to a, a celebration. Anytime something great like this happens, we want to make sure uh, that we uh, celebrate for them. I noticed you guys were getting the grills ready today uh, for the cookout for those students. Yes, we're, we're getting them ready, getting <coughs> fired up. We've got volunteers going to come in and cook, and, and we invite our stakeholders who want to stop by and eat with us and celebrate. Stop by. Well, it's uh, kind of exciting. We were concerned and wondering how the juniors was going to uh, meet the bar where the last year's seniors had raised the bar concerning your graduation rate. Uh, uh, it, it looks like uh, they're beginning the year in stellar fashion. Yes, they're beginning it. Uh, last year's group with that 100%, you know, heading to college. I mean, that's that's a tough mark to to live up to. Hopefully, uh, we, I wish I could say we're going to have 101% this year, but of course that's <laughs> not possible. Our goal is to hit 100% once again. But uh, our students are really focused on college and career readiness, as we are as a school. And we know that's important to to parents because it's our job to prepare them for life after high school. And I think our district's doing a great job with that. Well, the if if we were to go to the elementary school and ask uh, Mr. Jones to convene just a random group of elementary parents or kindergarten or preschool parents, and if we were to ask you what's the number one objective or goal for our school district, it would be to prepare your son or daughter for life after high school. And I want to commend these gentlemen and their staff for really being focused on doing that. Uh, something that so many people have asked about the success and, and want to thank each of you for those of you that have sent uh, congratulatory emails and notes. It's, uh, we'll try to share those with the students, pass those along to staff and uh, it's just positive for our community and the success of this. You'll notice on the school marquees uh, their concern, how proud we are of the uh, progress of the students and also across the state uh, uh, this is getting widespread media attention because of the success of our students and one of the things that this is going to assist with will be college recruiters and university recruiters actually seeking out our students because of their high academic performance and that is just another bonus as to what what occurs because of the hard work that's went into this and something that we try to stress is that it's not just 
that junior year that all this occurs, the foundation being laid at the elementary school and then in junior high in grade seven with that explore test that, uh, that our district gives in addition to the eighth grade explore test and analyzing those results and focusing on the plan test to eventually move up to the 11th grade year for the ACT and something we need to commend uh, the staff about too is for those seniors that although you're number four in the state uh, on the uh, ACT, if they're wanting another point to get a certain scholarship, that we not only work to do well academically on the ACT our junior year, but also for those seniors, uh, there's some great steps in process or uh, some great ways that you guys have supports for improving scores at the senior level. Yes. Uh we know to, to get the scholarships that, that the parents want and, and the money that will help and offset uh, paying out of parents' pockets is getting the ACT score up. So we've got many programs uh, in our library students can check out, uh, online free online resources, and we've got teachers that are willing to stay after school to provide that extra help they need to improve those scores. Uh, I don't know, so I don't really know if our students realize how important that ACT is, but I know as parents we do, and uh, we're working very hard to make sure they get the highest score possible. That's our, that's our goal. Uh, something that I need to commend the staff on is uh, there, there was a meeting the other day uh, dis discussing ESS or extended school services or tutoring after school and I uh, need to commend the staff because several teachers just volunteered to stay without pay after school for the benefit of the students and I just want to commend them on that dedication and and uh, their hard work and efforts and that doesn't go unnoticed whether it's the administration or the staff and uh, I know that our board members and district are, are thrilled to see that kind of attitude. So congratulations to both of you on the scores and as you said, especially uh, to our students. It's, that's just phenomenal uh, for them. Uh, Mr. Jones, the first thing that you'd like to highlight, because I know you've got a list of good <laughs> news also. Well, actually, I want to begin <coughs> by uh, just amen and you uh, congratulating Pipewell High School. Uh, as a phenomenal accomplishment. Uh, uh, the I was thinking about this when I heard the uh, results uh, the other day. You know, I've been in this business about 21 years, and uh, I can remember. You know, we've tested all these years, and and sometimes we even question. You know, what exactly were we testing? Uh, you know, you know, over the years. But now we, you know, we have a a testing system that I feel is more geared towards, you know, the college and career readiness. That's something that's measurable, and you know, everyone knows the ACT, and. Uh, you know, when you take an ACT and, and you say your school is ranked, uh, your district is ranked fourth in the state, you know, that speaks highly. Uh, you know, everyone knows that's the ACT. Everyone's familiar with the ACT. So, uh, you know, I can't congratulate uh, the high school enough. Uh, Mr. Rowe, uh, that's a wonderful accomplishment. Thank you. Uh, and we really are, uh, are uh, you know, very proud of you. Um, you know, I'll begin by highlighting one thing, if that's okay. Uh, you know, our biggest uh, uh, thing coming up in the next little bit that I want to get the word out there is, is our Grandparents' Day. Uh, you know, that was number one on my list of seven or eight things here is, is to bring that out because every year uh, we try to do a lot of things at the school to bring in the community. Uh, you know, because, you know, obviously the younger the children you know, the more they want their parents involved uh, and, and grandparents involved and, and you know sometimes you know I guess as the children get older uh, you know high school age that kind of backs off but uh, you know our kids want their parents there want their grandparents there and uh, you know we try to do things to highlight their activities and uh, on September the uh, 6th um, on Thursday September the 6th it's our first big uh, night or event I'm sorry not night but event of the year our grandparents day uh... you know it's grandparents slash grandfriends day uh... you know students you, you bring in their grandparents uh, or a significant uh, you know person in their life you know can be mother father and uncle but you know last year we served about uh... uh... five hundred additional meals on on the grandparents day with uh... in the the purpose is when the grandparents come in the aunts and uncles come in, you know, they have lunch with their uh, grandchild. And um, we have more specific information uh, that we've sent home, but 
you know, an adult meal is $4. Uh, you know, you can RSVP. There's been a note go home in the child's book bag. Uh, you please get those back to school, but and more information will come. But you know, the adult meal is four dollars. We have, uh, you know, when we have these big events, there's always, you know, a problem with parking. I'd like to thank the board and Mr. Green for, and Mr. Bart Williams for helping us out on that. We, you now can park in our fields, and we have a shuttle service you, you know, that we'll provide to bring parents right to the front door, uh, pick parents up, and uh, bring them back, uh, you know, after they eat. But again, that's on uh, Thursday. September 6th, and it's during your grandchild or, or um, son or daughter's lunch time. And more information will be coming home about that. Well, could you also share, I know that uh, the kind of participation that you're expecting there, could you share what kind of participation you had during your open house? We, uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, when we have our open houses, um, uh, you know, this is not counting, you know, the students who enrolled opening day, uh, but, you know, when we have our open houses, you know, the two nights before school starts generally, you, you know, with our grades, we have a, a phenomenal turnout. Uh, you know, this year's, uh, you know, uh, uh, close to 97 uh, percent uh, attendance. You know, that's unheard of uh, in, in uh, anywhere I've ever been before to uh, have 97 percent of your child's uh, parents uh, you know, or legal guardians come in and meet the teachers in the open house night. So that's phenomenal. And of course on opening day we picked up a few more. But that is just, it's, it, 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 it happens every year, you know, we're kind of used to that around here. You know, and you know, but that don't happen in a lot of places. And you, you know, we're grateful that our community and, uh, and our parents, uh, grandparents, you value edu education as much as they do. The, the reason I ask you that question is just exactly the comment that you've made there to sum that up. We're so thankful. It, our jobs are immensely much easier whenever our community values education as much as the community of Pikeville values education because whatever that you value, mom or dad out there, your son or daughter will value. Uh, the, the same things that you value in life, your son or daughter will pick up on that. And we're so thankful for that, whether you're instilling that at the early elementary grades and then, of course, at the high school grade levels, that's showing uh, with the results. And, and we're so thankful for that and seeing those results. And you know, it's so hard to believe uh, in less than two months, uh, students will be taking the Explore and the Plan exams this fall. Yes, it's a, it uh, <coughs> seems like it was just yesterday we're getting out of school from last year, but uh, our, our teachers and our students are geared up for it. Uh, our curriculum is aligned you know, to enhance our students' understanding the material that's going to be on that test. So uh, we're excited and we're eager. Uh, we want to take those exams, we want to get the data back to see what we need to do to change or to improve. Right. Um, know that we mentioned new staff uh, the last time. Uh, we've also got not only new staff, but I know that uh, like Dr. Versailles especially uh, has got uh, many new instruments and equipment to be using too. Very excited about that. As a school we were able to come up with 5,000 additional dollars. And I know Mr. Green, I want to thank, uh, thank you and the board for finding an additional $15,000 to to buy this equipment. Uh, it, was, it was much needed and I can tell you after being at the uh, Pike County Bowl and listening to our percussion section of the uh, of, of our band, the money was well spent. Uh, Dr. Masalia is great with our kids. Uh, our band is growing. It was great to see uh, our band out in full force and, and kids enjoying being in the band. Right. And, and I know something different this year is uh, our band director is traveling to elementary school for also grades uh, five and six. Yeah, actually he begins his day at the elementary school. Uh, he, he does our sixth grade band uh, first period and he does a fifth grade general music class the second period and I will echo uh, you, Mr. Rose comments he's doing a phenomenal job. Uh, uh, you know and and I also want to compliment uh, you know, him. I was at the Pike County Bowl uh, Saturday night saw the band. I thought the band looked sharp. I thought the, you know, I thought the instruments looked sharp. So, uh, you know, kudos. I'll steal a <laughs> phrase from Mr. Rowe, but kudos to uh, Dr. Brasaglia and the band. 
Uh, well, on that same note, I noticed that uh, your chorus program just started this week too. So you may want to share some of that information concerning Miss Kelly. We, uh, you, Miss Kelly, of course, is, is our uh, music teacher. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the rest of the day after Dr. Versailles goes back to the high school to assume his duties over there. But Miss Kelly started uh, a chorus, uh, you know, recently. Uh, we had uh, at our best count actually. Uh, uh, pretty close to accurate count was about 60 kids already uh, wow. in course. Um, she generally has a great turnout. That's, you know, that's children in fourth, fifth, and sixth grades. Uh, you know, she generally has a, a great turnout and, and uh, not much turnover. You know, the kids you know, seem to stay with her and stick it out. So, uh, you know, that has begun. Uh, any, you know, anyone out there, if, if your child uh, uh, is in grades four, five, and six and not in course, they'd like to be in course at the elementary school, please have them contact us, contact Miss Kelly about getting signed up for that. But again, uh, it's just a great number. Well, I know that uh, uh, Mr. Rowe just mentioned the way the bound sounded at the uh, Pike County Bowl game. Uh, not only did the band have a huge night, uh, so did the team and also some of our students. Yes, it was a, uh it was a great theme uh, by our student body. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to be there, but it was the rock and roll night, and we saw some some of our students dressed up, dressed up as Kiss, which was quite, quite unique, and they kind of made that onto sports overtime with the YMT. They were excited about that. Uh, we also have a our 2012 Pike County Bowl Queen, uh, Madison Tackett. We're very excited for her. This is the second consecutive year that Pike uh, Pikeville High School has. Uh, had the queen as a student in our school, so we're very excited about that. Our football team played a great game, uh, uh, defeating Powell County. Uh, we had a great turnout, and it's going to be equal a big paycheck for the Pike County schools, uh, all the schools in the county, including us. Uh, I want to thank Community Trust, and I want to thank WYMT for allowing us to be a part of it. Oh, that's that's huge there, and I know extracurriculars at the elementary are going strong with the Little League programs. We are. Our, our uh, Little League football is up and running. Uh, we, you know, of course, our basketball uh, program started a little later, but uh, your know, little league football's up and running. I have an announcement here from Mr. Howard. Uh, he wanted me to share that uh, the first little league football game, uh, that's in grades two through six, uh, is going to be uh, September fourth, Tuesday, September fourth, and all those games will take place at Bob Amos Park. So we're excited about uh, you know the number of kids out for little league football. Uh, we appreciate our volunteer coaches. Uh, you know they're not paid a dime for coaching. Uh, you know they do it because they love the game and they love children and I appreciate Mr. Howard leading uh, you know, those programs for us uh, and also Ms. Prater, Ms. Haynes uh, you know, leads our uh, you know, girls programs but again Little League football begins September 4th at Bob Amos Park. Okay, great. Uh, anything uh, else on the roster at the uh, high school? Yeah, a couple, of, a couple more kudos and a couple of events that's going on. Uh, we'll say again kudos to our band. Uh, uh, we had a lot of uh, folks, a lot of alumni that came to the Pike County Bowl, and uh, we're very excited about them. So kudos to, to a great start for, for the year. We also have our first Parent Advisory Council meeting. We have these uh, the first Tuesday of every month at 6 o'clock. Our first one's going to be September the 4th at 6 p.m., and this is going to be located uh, in the Senior Lounge. Uh, when we started this uh, two years ago, we had a lot of parents that were showing up, and it kind of died down a little bit. So we're encouraging parents to come out. Our goal is to share the positives and the negatives and what can we do to improve the negatives and make them positive. So uh, we're pretty excited about having this going again, so please, if you get a chance, uh, stop by for that. Uh, we're once again doing Read to Lead. Uh, if you're new to the school district, every other Wednesday we spend 30 minutes at the end of the day just reading. Uh, we do that as a faculty, and we do that as a student, and we invite our stakeholders to come in and read with us. Uh, it's a time for us to stress the importance of reading, and we know if a student can read, then they're going to do much better in other subjects. Uh, I want to say kudos to uh, Coach uh, Cecil and the volleyball team. We're now 11-1. and one. We are in the quarterfinals of the All-A, so please come out and support us. Uh, kudos to the girls golf team. They are the All-A region champs. Uh, coach McClure, uh, the first year coach, is doing a great job, and so kudos to her and the girls. And kudos to Noah Combs uh, on the boys squad. He did qualify for the All-A state tournament, so we're excited for him, and hopefully he can go down and bring us back a state uh, championship title. Uh, 
One thing I'm going to steal from Mr. Jones, and he sent it on his uh, his newsletter email he sends out, is a lot of times we, we recognize or we always continually trying to recognize uh, students in our building. A lot of times we don't know recognitions for things they've done outside of the school. So if there's a recognition that you know for a student, whether it be your child or somebody else's, please send that to us and we'll make sure that gets uh, put in a stakeholder email. We know a lot of great things that happen outside of school and we want to share those with everybody to celebrate those successes. Uh, junior High Homecoming, uh, the game is scheduled for Tuesday, September the 4th, and that's at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be playing Eastridge. Uh, homecoming activities will take place uh, before the football game begins. And how could we couldn't forget this? We have the Junior High Homecoming Dance. Uh, and this is going to be on September the 8th uh, from 7 to 10 in the great 8th grade hallway. Dress is going to be casual, t-shirts and jeans. Uh, there's no need to go out and buy the expensive dresses or rent the tuxes. It's just going to be a good time for us all. Uh, lastly, I want to say, uh, and the same thing I said during our open house, is uh, as administrator, sometimes we get busy, but I want you to know uh, your child is very important to us. Uh, if you need to stop and see me, talk to me. If you don't need an appointment, please come in. I'll do everything in my power to change my schedule to meet with you at that point because if it's important enough for you to be able to come into the building, it's important enough for me to find time to talk to you. So. Thank you. Uh, something that I uh, just got to say is a huge thank you to the parents and the boosters. I know that uh, we probably have uh, some of the most active boosters uh, in all sports across the board. And I mean, not just uh, decorating the lockers within the schools when the students aren't around uh, as, a, as a, a way to just recognize them or their accomplishments or their team and whatever they're participating in, to uh, I think the moms make brownies and uh, uh, take milk out to the teams after the practices uh, on certain nights as a celebration for those students. I've never, I've never heard of that before. The parents rotating and working in the concession stands and for the fundraisers. I mean, uh, it's it's phenomenal and that. We just want to highlight your hard work and your efforts and say that that doesn't go unnoticed. Oh, without a doubt, we couldn't sustain what we do extracurricular-wise without our booster clubs. Uh, they go uh, above the, the call for anything. Uh, I often joke that uh, we've got a t-shirt for everything, and that's one of our bigger sellers as a booster club, but, our, but we, 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 they, people buy them, people wear them. Uh, we could not do anything without booster clubs. I'm glad you brought booster clubs up because I did want to, I did communicate this in the last stakeholder email. Uh, Mr. Garris will be contacting booster clubs to get the financial statements. We want those monthly and, of course, at the end of year. It's not what we're trying to say you can't buy something or we're not trying to say anything like that. We just have to be in Title IX compliance, and we've got to make sure that we have evidence when we do our annual report for the High School Athletic Association that we have documentation showing we are in compliance. So if he asks for that, don't, don't think we're trying to do anything mean. We're just trying to make sure we're in compliance with Title IX and to make sure that we can keep our sports going as we do. And for those of you that may not be familiar with Title IX, in other words, uh, the high school principal is responsible for making sure that we balance on the expenditures for both girls and boys sports. And uh, his designee, the athletic director, has got to get those reports to make sure that we're spending similar amounts of money on both boys and girls. Yes, and uh, since Title IX has been enforced over the years, uh, I can tell you the female sports have uh, drastically improved. The conditions for the female athletes have been good. And I can tell you the last uh, couple of Title IX reports we've had, we've come back very positive, and we're, we're doing our best to ensure that we're spending money equally. Well, it, on and, and usually we try not to spend this much time on extracurriculars, mm -hmm. but uh, we try to cover what's going on in the classroom. We want to say thank you so much to those uh, staff members and to the students. And uh, the engagement level, I welcome parents. If you'd like to come by and visit, or for those parents that do not have a son or daughter enrolled in uh, Pikeville Independent Schools, if you just want to observe a class or get a tour from one of the principals, we would love to have you. Please check in with the principal and or the guidance counselors or assistant principals, and we'll try to get you a tour to show you. Instead of being like Big Brother looking over the shoulder and seeing what's going on in the classroom, the culture of the atmosphere is like, hey, come on over here. Come on in to our classroom. Let me show you the exciting things that's going on. And whether it's at a preschool classroom or a calculus classroom that's at the advanced placement level at the high school, you'll find that same level uh, of welcoming uh, atmosphere in uh, within the classrooms. But on this extracurricular note, something that we've tried to do 
to make it much more convenient for both student athletes, for students involved in any extracurriculars, regardless what it may be, grade seven through 12, is providing snacks after school. And uh, Ms. Smith can't commend those ladies enough for those offerings. I know that I've been getting my ear bent about the lunchroom offerings at both schools and something that I need to share on Ms. Smith's uh, behalf and also our food service staff. Those are new federal lunchroom requirements concerning balancing uh, the breads, balancing whether it's the carbs, the proteins, all of these things. She has to make sure that we're within our proper measurements for those. And uh, of course, there's a, a new attack on childhood obesity. And uh, uh, we, uh, we may not prefer the taste, however, uh, the, the, as far as the uh, healthy uh, aspect of the food, that's the goal. Uh, so that's something we want to pass along to you. Also, they'll be trying new uh, uh, menu items and just to show that take suggestions I need to commend Mr. Rowe and the staff met with uh, junior students they came up with the idea of having almost like the subway uh, cold sandwich bar where you can actually pick out your uh, uh, ingredients for your cold cut sandwiches and uh, our food service ladies make that up for you well that's coming soon to the high school so and that was at, at the students request so just wanted to follow that up and touch on that yeah and that is something I'm sure Mr. Jones has heard of, uh, as well as I have uh, I've tried to share that from day one especially with the faculty get the news out and then we met with our individual classes and we, we spelled out exactly what's going on you know, our <laughs> lunchroom food is, is, is as good as any place I've ever been and we were used to having selections that probably weren't, well, they weren't, they, they weren't, weren't as healthy as the new ones are. <laughs> uh, and it has been adjustment, I mean, for faculty and students alike, but uh, child obesity is something that's, you know, very serious, and we have to do our job and our part to make sure we can overcome that. Uh, Ms. Smith does a great job. Uh, our lunchroom staff is a top notch. Uh, they relate well to us and to our kids. I want to commend them for what they're doing, and uh, we'll survive. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Jones. Yeah. I'm, um, you know, I want to echo Mr. Uh, you know Rose's comments. We have a great lunchroom staff. The elementary school, uh, you know, they take time to make it personal with the children. Uh, you know, you, they know the children's names. The children know their names, and and uh, I can't commend them enough for what they do over there. You know, that's, you know, I know you say this a lot. That's you know that's that's one of the first uh, faces they see every morning when they come in is is that lunchroom worker's face, and and uh, you know to see that face and get them off on the right track. I can't say enough positive things about them and the job they do over there. Have a couple quick things I'll mention. Uh, you, Mr. Rowe mentioned the booster clubs at the high school. Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, you of course don't have a booster club per se, but we do have a PTO, uh, parent teacher organization. I can't compliment them enough. You know, last year, uh, I think the records showed they spent about thirty-some thousand dollars uh, into our school uh, through trips and programs and activities and you know, they did for the kids. Uh, you know, this is an a organization that's very active uh, but is very small. Uh, you, they are looking for uh, uh, anyone who's interested, uh, any parent, uh, you know, grandparent, uh, you know, community member. If you're interested in being the, in the uh, Pipeville Elementary PTO, please come to the meetings. Uh, I can get you the information. I'll put that in my next uh, uh, stakeholder email, you know, the dates of the meetings. They're working on finding a date right now to be a consistent uh, you meeting date in the month but you know they've done a lot of work with uh, with uh, a, a few people uh, and and you know they're looking for more uh, you know, more people to get involved but then you know that's a very valuable organization to us and please uh, you know support the PTO and come out and help them uh, one of the big things that's that's always asked early for us is is uh, our pictures uh, Fall pictures will be Wednesday, September 19th. It's fall pictures at the elementary school Wednesday, September 19th. And one other thing real quick, STEM night. Uh, we um, I try to do some community activities, uh, you know, based on subjects during the year. Our first night will be on Monday, September 17th, uh, beginning at 6 p.m. at STEM night, which is science, math, and technology night. Uh, more information will go home in the, in the children's book bags and on my email very soon. That's really all I have. 
Thank you. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention, uh, I want to commend both staffs on training volunteers. If you're interested in volunteering, and also I know that the elementary school is looking for lunchroom monitors uh, to help cover the needs for uh, lunchroom during the day. So if you're interested, uh, please uh, let one of the principals or myself know, and we look forward to sharing a great deal more information with you in two weeks.